Taylor Swift is a master storyteller, and she wants to tell you a story. Through her songs, she paints vivid imagery of the stories from her heart. You feel connected to her, as she shares pieces of her life in her lyrics. Since her appearance on the country music scene with a guitar in hand, Taylor Swift has evolved from America's sweetheart to Miss Americana. The young teenager from Nashville once strived for perfection, is now a woman becoming the voice of her generation. She stands strongly for herself, her fans, and women. Her messages of empowerment will resonate for years around the world. Born Taylor Allison Swift, growing up in West Reading, Philadelphia, a regular childhood was not enough. She wanted to become a star. After gaining an interest to become a musician, her parents fully supported her. At 11, she felt Nashville, Tennessee was calling her after she watched a VH1 documentary on Faith Hill. During her first visit to the city, she left a demo CD at the front desk of every record label on Music Row. I'm Taylor Swift, she'd say, and I want a record deal. In an interview with American songwriter, Taylor recalled, everyone in that town wanted to do what I wanted to do. So I kept thinking to myself, I need to figure out a way to be different. Like Destiny, Taylor decided to pick up guitar. She learned guitar along with songwriting with a local musician and computer repairman, Ronnie Kremer. The first song she wrote was Lucky You, after learning her first three chords, C, D, and G on the guitar, and inspired by her grandmother. Later, playing guitar became an essential aspect of her image. In 2004, at age 14, Taylor Swift became the youngest signing in history with Sony ATV. After entering high school, Taylor Swift began meeting Liz Rose for two-hour writing sessions every Tuesday after school. Rose thought the sessions were some of the easiest I've ever done. Basically, I was just her editor. She'd write about what happened in school that day. She had such a clear vision of what she was trying to say, and she'd come in with the most incredible hooks. Taylor later said, I genuinely felt that I was running out of time. I wanted to capture these years of my life on an album while they still represented what I was going through. Taylor later left Sony, but her incredible drive paid off. At 15, she negotiated with former Universal executive Scott Borchetta at Big Machine Records as her new label. At 16, she released her eponymous debut studio album, and nothing was ever the same. Piggybacking off Tim McGraw's star power to drum up interest in her single, Tim McGraw, made country fans notice her. Taylor was the girl who sang about their icon, but that's not all she was. She was a breath of fresh air in the country music scene filled with older men. And unlike other young stars, she wrote or co-wrote almost all of her music. She was perfect at being conventional, so perfect that nobody felt threatened by the abilities of her songwriting. Getting involved in the whole songwriting community in Nashville really helped me along. Girls loved her because she was relatable, singing about falling in love and growing up, while parents loved her innocent image. She encapsulated the all-American good girl image, backed up by her flawless interviews showcasing that American sweetheart from the countryside persona. J. Freedom Dulac wrote in a Washington Post profile from 2008, she's a reporter's dream and, no doubt, a publicist too, a media darling indeed. Little did people know, Taylor was having serious image issues at the time. It wasn't revealed until 2020 in her documentary Miss Americana, where she recalled having cycles of unhealthy eating habits to maintain a thin body by Hollywood standards. She said, I remember how, when I was 18, that was the first time I was on the cover of a magazine, and the headline was like, pregnant at 18? And it was because I had worn something that made my lower stomach look not flat, so I just registered that as a punishment. When stylists commented on how she can fit into sample sizes, Taylor took it as approval or praise to maintain her double zero dress size. It's still hard for Taylor to talk about the issue, but she told herself, I was like, nope, we don't do that anymore. We do not do that anymore. This message resonates strongly with her fans who are struggling with their body image. It's rare for a pop singer of her standing to be so open about her eating disorder. It's better to, look, to think you look fat than to look sick. Typically, Taylor Swift refrained from speaking about her personal life and opinions. Her massive popularity is paired with massive scrutiny. Her lyrics tell her stories, but they're not enough. The media and public often analyzed her relationships, political standings, and personal matters. In her documentary Miss Americana, she admits she focused on being nice to sell country music. Her success depended on being liked, for being an image of herself. It took a toll on Taylor, mentally. She felt her success wasn't deserved. 
Having her self-worth tied up with being liked came to be a nightmare with the famous fiasco with Kim Kardashian and Kanye West. It all came down at once. Her every move was seen as calculated, from her once positively viewed girl squad of famous female friends to her relationships. Her good girl image was gone, as social media collectively labeled her a snake. People were vocally announcing their dislike for Taylor Swift, and it was straining her. She said in her movie, I had to deconstruct an entire belief system for my own personal sanity. She took a step back from the spotlight to find herself in her darkest days. Her new album, Reputation, please welcome Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift eventually came back to the spotlight with the release of Reputation. She reinvented herself, fully embracing her role as a villain. As the public saw her as a narcissist, she used it as fuel for her music. She was no longer hiding behind her good girl image and is finding who she is as a woman. As she said to herself, the old Taylor is dead, and the new Taylor no longer cares about the public's perception of her. After Reputation, Taylor Swift was no longer indecisive. She's always been a woman of influence, but kept a closed mouth for her American sweetheart image. But the new and brasher Taylor Swift was no longer neutral. In 2017, Taylor won a symbolic $1 in damages against DJ David Mueller for harassment in 2013. This act truly reflects the current social landscape of gender equality and female empowerment. A year later, Taylor Swift finally took a political stand, and it was a big one. She urged her fans to vote in the midterm elections, proudly endorsing Tennessee's Democratic candidate for Senate. It wasn't easy. Her staying politically quiet was influenced by her father. Swift was even in tears, begging her father to forgive her for getting political and speaking out against Republican Senator Marsha Blackburn. She wrote, I have always and always will cast my vote based on which candidate will protect and fight for the human rights I believe we all deserve in this country. I believe in the fight for LGBTQ rights and that any form of discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender is wrong. Taylor Swift was criticized harshly for not condemning Trump in 2016, so in 2020, she let her opinions free. Her tweet has over 2 million likes, but also many disgruntled replies, telling her a pop singer has no business in politics. Unlike before, Taylor Swift will not hide her voice to please others. Some will only see the new Taylor as a calculated pop star trying to appease fans. But to fans, she's caring, as she's always loved them. In 2019, she contributed over $4,500 for a fan's tuition. Amidst the pandemic, Taylor Swift privately sent monetary funds to her fans. She donated to Nashville record store Grimey's new and pre-loved music to support their employees. She's also donated $1,300 to those affected by the 2020 riots a few days after supporting Black Lives Matter. Apart from others, she's taking a stand for herself. Under Big Machine Records, her masters were sold to Scooter Braun without her consent. These masters were Taylor Swift's first six albums, Taylor Swift, Fearless, Speak Now, Red, 1989, and Reputation. Collectively, they've sold over 50 million copies worldwide. Scooter Braun's Ithaca Holdings later sold the rights to an investment fund for a big payday. As these masters are personal diary entries for Taylor, she's fighting back. Taylor Swift, in a power move, is re-recording her masters. If the re-recorded versions are used, the masters will not be getting royalties from new plays. Taylor said, This just happened to me without my approval, consultation, or consent. After I was denied the chance to purchase my music outright, my entire catalog, to ask how I might feel about the new owner of my art, the music I wrote, the videos I created, photos of me, my handwriting, my album designs. The fact that private equity enabled this man to think, according to his own social media post, that he could buy me. But I'm obviously not going willingly. Her move is empowering others. We need to continue to try to offer something to a younger generation of musicians. As Taylor Swift opens up, she still tells stories through her songs. In her 2019 album, Lover, a song, Soon You'll Get Better, was a tribute to her mother Andrea Swift's battle with cancer. Taylor explained in a Variety interview, Everyone loves their mom. Everyone's got an important mom. But for me, she's really the guiding force. Almost every decision I make, I talk to her about it first. Her mother is a two-time breast cancer survivor and is experiencing a recurrence after a tumor was found in her brain. As she continues to fight the illness, Taylor continues to reinvent herself. Her quarantine-era release of Folklore, ushering in a new era of post-pop Taylor Swift. 
As everything Taylor has done in her life, she garners praise and backlash. In an interview for Maxim, Taylor said, A man writing about his feelings from a vulnerable place is brave. A woman writing about her feelings from a vulnerable place is oversharing or whining. Misogyny is ingrained in people from the time they're born. She will continue to fight double standards and stand up not only for herself, for her fans, but for a generation. Taylor Swift always had a way with words. In her songs, she puts into words things a generation couldn't properly articulate, from the magic of falling in love to standing up for beliefs. Apart from her activism, Taylor Swift's music career is only a series of highs. Every album is a smash hit. She holds the record for the most entries by a female artist to chart on the Billboard Top 100s with 113 entries. She's the first female solo act to win a Grammy for Album of the Year, twice, and also the youngest. On top of her 10 Grammys, she's the most decorated artist of the American Music Awards with 29 wins. One of the honors is being the artist of the decade. I really just want you guys to be able to tell your own story. Is Taylor Swift empowering for you? Are you looking forward to her music releases? For more videos like this one, subscribe to The Taco.